Alright, this is Kim Willis again with another video in the series 21 ways to build a cult following for your business or for whatever project you, you know, you've got a passion about. Um, we talk about cult building, some people call it uh, tribe building. Indeed, I have a Facebook group that is called the, uh, the Tribe Builder Community. Uh, but I guess uh, when you use the word cold, it has a slightly different uh, meaning to it and uh, creates more interest, provokes more curiosity, slightly controversial. I've covered a bunch of these tips already and here is another one. Here is another one and this one is called language. Colts have their own language. They do. They do. Yeah. Bonsoir. Yeah. Um, yeah. By the way, I'm I'm uh, at my favourite little restaurant or cafe stroke restaurant here in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, and uh, having having a meal, good basic French fare, and uh, French cuisine is definitely my favourite cuisine. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I've just had my starter or entree, which is the correct term for it. Um, I've just had it plonked in front of me. And um, yeah, this is an interesting, uh, interesting restaurant. It's called Les Olivier. So if you ever come to Phnom Penh, Cambodia, uh, yeah, take a visit to uh, Les Olivier's. It's interesting. It's, uh, it's kind of colourful, partly because of where it's situated. Partly because where it, where it's situated, it's situated in one of the red light streets in Phnom Penh. Okay, uh, so yeah, there's there's hostess bars, just two doors up, the first of them, and there's a bunch more besides. After that, um, there's some squalor. There's some uh, broken down people here for sure. Um, there are street people. There are people living rough. Uh, in fact. Um, up until recently, uh, they were living rough right next door here. Uh, even when I was eating, you saw them living rough. Uh, they've gone now because um, there's been a change in the way the footpath or the, the sidewalk has, has been configured. But, uh, yeah, so be, be warned. If you come to Les Olivier's, be warned. Uh, it's not one of your uh, high-class dining establishments. But that's the way I like it. Anyway, all right, now this one is... Uh, this. This lesson, mini lesson, is called language. And all cults, in fact, a lot of really top businesses have their own language. Think of uh, Google, think of uh, Apple, even Microsoft. Uh, they develop their own words, brand names, of course, product names, but, but um, that often they, they use other words that are associated with their products, etc. In the network marketing field, uh, Amway, uh, they have thing. Uh, they have uh, phrases like "go direct," and only an Amway person will know what that means. "Go direct," okay? Um, and they have a bunch of other words as well. So language is important. And so, have so if if you include, you develop some of your own words that that you can kind of blueprint. They become your words even though they may be familiar, represent familiar vernacular out there in the wider community. But if you can, if you can kind of seize ownership of some of these words, you, uh, people will associate your business with those words. I'm not necessarily saying that you will create words from scratch, or you'll invent words, maybe you won't do that. Although Steve Jobs did a pretty good, uh, pretty good job of creating words revolving around the letter I, didn't he? iPhone, iPad, I, I, uh, iPod, etc. So, yeah, so uh, pretty good at it. Pretty good at it. So, when you're developing your following, your cult, your philosophy, etc., you want to, you definitely want to um, create a language that consists of words that you are going to use over and over again. Words that have meaning. They mean something to you, and then you can inculcate your followers uh, with these words. You can in inculcate their thinking with these words. So whenever you, uh, when you, whenever you mention these words, your followers will instantly 
uh, connect with uh, the meaning behind those words in relation to your business or your tribe, your movement or whatever it happens to be. Language is important and although I wouldn't say I have the greatest vocabulary on the planet, um, I'm always looking at words and, I'm, and, and sometimes, I, sorry about the noise, it is rather noisy at the moment, it will quieten down but it will be too late for you guys, but um, I'm always checking words, checking words on the thesaurus and in the dictionary and so on, um, words that I don't understand, I'm looking at them, I look them up. I've, I've got a fascination for words because I know as a, as a copywriter, as, a, as an ex-pro copywriter, um, I was good at sales copy, okay? I, I, I don't think I'd ever win um, you know, a, a prize for literature or anything like that, but when it comes to using the printed word to sell stuff, I, I'm quite good at that. And I became a, uh, became a real student of, of, of language, the English language in particular, fantastic language. And uh, words have a power. They have, have a power to move people. They have a power to stimulate people. They have a power to uh, connect with people emotionally. Um, words are, wow, uh, the correct use of words is astonishing, astonishing. Look at the great oratory skills of somebody like uh, Obama, Barack Obama, fantastic. Now, irrespective of what your politics are, he, he was fantastic, and he still is fantastic at uh, using words in a powerful way. Now, three quarters of what he said was BS, uh, probably, but um, it certainly had a potent effect, uh, particularly in the early stages of his presidency. And there are lots and lots of examples, besides I mentioned Amway before. Uh, the two founders of Amway, particularly uh, Richard DeVos, uh, okay, he's, like he's 90 years of age now, something like that, but um, wow, listen to some of these early speeches. He, he's probably the best I've ever heard. Phenomenal. Just see if you can go on a YouTube or something like that, Richard DeVos, you'd be amazed at what, uh, not only what he says, but how he says it, how he delivers it. Astonishing. Uh, how good he was. Not so good now, at 90 years of age, but uh, he, he, man, he had it all. And it was one of the reasons why he, with Jay's, with his partner's help, uh, assembled such a massive network of followers. And of course, that manifested as a business, but a massive network of followers of millions and millions and millions of people. And I think a lot of it had to do with the power of his words his oratory skills, or, oratorial skills. Now you don't have to be a great orator to make this work, by the way. Um, you can use the printed word to, to influence people with words. But if you're building a tribe, you want, to, you want to take control of some words and take ownership of them. Even if those words are used out there in the community, you want to be associated with those particular words. So language is very important, and that's the end of this mini tip for today. If you haven't joined my Tribe Builder Facebook community, just go to uh, Tribe, Tribe Builder, the Tribe Builder community on Facebook, make a request to join, and if we approve you, I'm sure you will enjoy it and get some value out of it, and of course, you provide value as well. All right, this is Kim Willis. Bye for now.